Hi, it's Jess here from nigezza.co.uk and I'm here with another episode in my um, gothic junk journal and what we're doing today is this fold out envelope very hugely stuffed uh, pocket here um, got a pocket on the front um, I think I need to cut a little thumb hole there but I was kind of deciding whether or not it needs it and um, I think it probably does now I've just demonstrated <laughs> that it does so it's made out of an envelope and um, the envelopes that I've used are a stamping up envelope um, because it's got this nice closure there you could use an envelope like this you would just have a different shaped sort of tuck but I like this shape and um, it kind of fitted well with that stamp as well which I quite liked so I shall show you what you need. I'm going to leave that to one side just in case I need to refer to it. So this is going in this signature and I'm putting it here um, where it's sort of got all the, the purplies. So that's where it's going. So I've picked my paper accordingly. So here's my envelope. I say I really like that, that shape. Um, so they're standard sort of C6 envelopes here. Um, they are sized, I've got it written down, they are six and three eighths by four and a half. Okay, so we need a piece of pattern paper there to cover that. I've cut it the same size and actually I need to cut it down. So I'll give you those measurements in a minute. I will list everything over on my blog at nigeza.co.uk and it will be linked down below then this is some of the paper the um, copy of paper that I dyed with the ink to match so that covers the outside there and then I've got this paper here and I've put a little bit of the purple um, ink on this and that is gonna go over the top but I will be cutting it with a die and the dies I'm using for this are the one that matches the paper which is the Halloween magic dies and then this is the curvy dies and I'm using this I might actually use the different one for this just to show the difference I might use this one um, to cut the the curviness of the pocket I use the one with the 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 holes in for the other one you can see here makes a really pretty that's what I saw when I saw these dies I thought pockets and um, so I think I'm going to use the other die for that one um, and then I've already pre-cut my my tags for going on the inside so in this lovely set here you get you get this beautiful die here that's got ridges on it so it gives you a, a really nice shape I don't know if you can see the shape that it gives you there and because I'd actually been cutting this paper here that I had coloured with ink there's a slight colouring on the edge here of the ink it's sort of impregnated a bit in the dye and I really like the look so because on the other side of the dye you don't get that that look that is cut so that that will cover both sides you've got that lovely beveled edge and detail on both sides so that's a nice simple tag so that's those two and then I've cut for another tag one in black and then one in white so again we've got the nice white for journaling on and then I cut a smaller section <coughs> just to just to to decorate it and then we have um, these bits oh these are for the tags to go on the front I thought I'd cut the tags up oh well I haven't so um, cutting the tags up as well and using this lovely tag topper punch here to make these pretty tags and as you can see I've got this one's going to have sort of purple effect on the outside and then cut one of these just an interesting shape for journaling cards 
Okay, so let's get started. We'll, all of these things will be listed on my blog and there'll be links to my shop if you wish to buy any of these things. So I'll put them to one side. So the first thing we've got to do is cut our envelope down. So because I want an opening in the top, often we stick the envelopes down and we kind of cut at the side, but I want the opening to be in the top. So it does measure four and a half. So I'm just going down to four and a quarter. So it just was easier for, for measuring. So cut it down to four and a quarter. I'm just checking that is in fact what I did. So that gives us our opening at the top. And we just want to fold the envelope in half. I like to use this because it butts it up, but anything like that will work. And then I just take the bone folder and give it a good burnish. So that's our basic shape there with our pocket there and a pocket at the top. Um, I had cut this to exactly the same size. So I had cut this to six and three eighths by four and a half. But of course, I need to take it down to four and a quarter. I forgot when I cut it initially that I had, in fact, cut it down. So that is, you could cut it so that you had... Um, a margin round. Um, I haven't, but actually just to show the difference, I might do that. So I might cut this to four inches and then I might cut this to six and an eighth so that we've got a little, a little matting all the way around. Just so you can see, see the difference. Okay, so that might look quite nice. So the thing to remember when sticking this down, which I didn't remember last time, is you've got an opening here. And what I did is just cover the whole thing in glue, but you've got to remember that, that bottom bit, you just want a bead along the bottom bit. So I'm gonna, the other side, I put that there so I can kind of see where the top of that is. So I sort of know where, where to come along. So we'll go along there. So all this can get covered in glue. And then I'll just do a bead along there. Easy to forget these things. I've done it countless times. There we go. So. So once all the bits are cut out, it actually goes together quite quickly. And then on this side, we're going to stick those down. And I think what I want to do is cover, um, use some black for the black there for the um, all the way around the outside, I think. I just want to sort of define the edge of this. I haven't actually done much inking on this at all. And in the other one, I think I used just a marker pen to go around. Because I couldn't be bothered to <laughs> get me sponge when I was doing it. I think that just defines the edge nicely. 
can say this is, if you remember right from the beginning of this series, I showed you how I used my inks to dye this paper so that it nicely matches. Normally in junk journals I'll do coffee and tea dyeing, but obviously in this one, coffee and tea dyed paper wouldn't have wouldn't have looked right. Don't need to do the bottom because I'm going to cover it up, but just just in case, I am going to cover this bottom up. There we go. So I'm going to leave that to one side just in case I decide to do any more. So I'm going to stick these on the outside. I can cover this completely in glue because it's going to be flat edge. It's the bit we're sticking on that's going to be the pocket. The glitch there. And I haven't done the die cutting for the pockets yet. So I will do that in a sec. You can see where it's taken some of the, even though I did this ages ago, it's taken some of the colour of the ink. There we are. So that's our outside, that's our inside. We uh, need to fold that again because that inside is not folded. It does make it quite a, a bulky. That's oozed and it's oozed out some colour. Not so so it is slightly bulky. So if you wanted to, you could cut a bit out of this flap here to reduce some of the bulk. But I'm just going to leave it in. I quite like it like that. Managed to get a bit on there. So we can just um, get all these tags, which all need sticking together. These ones need the other tags cut for them, actually. But these ones will go together quite nicely. So those go together and those go together. And I did do a bit of stamping on them. Um, I stamped on the inside ones, which I thought was quite a nice effect. And I stamped there as well, which I'm going to do. So I use the stamp set that matches these dies and I just love that it's designed to go in the smaller one so I didn't stamp the whole stamp I just stamped the edge of it when I put it around so let's get a nice big block So I'm just going to ink around this edge down to the bottom to place it just on that corner bit there. And I might do the other half as well. So I was just really careful with inking up. So I just... Went down the side. And then sort of line that up straight there. Put it towards the top. Very difficult when you can't lean over. There we go. Just wanted to bring a little something to it. There we are, that one went a little bit further over, but that's fine. That will do nicely, so we'll just get that cleaned off. I'm going to leave that to dry because I find this ink actually um, 
takes a bit longer to dry than um, stamping up ink so I will not be touching that for a moment and then what I did on here was I stamped I just didn't stamp the end so that it would go on and just to sort of help me um, I got a scrap of paper um, and sort of placed it over there so that it didn't go anywhere so I didn't have to sort of worry too much about how far it was stamped not sure that that's in shot down there so with my bit of paper in the way I did that and I'm gonna do some um, I might type some words and print off actually because although I like to use my stamps I haven't got many with different words on so I think I will do these differently now this one's going to be sort of upside down to the other one but that works slight smudge there can I get red before it dries not really oh well be fine 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 and that is the stamping so let's I'm probably not going to do this on the other tags because I'll probably stamp some words on the other tags, sort of journaling prompts. So that's that nicely cleaned. So we've got those are going to get stuck on like so. And these two are for the tags that I've not got. So I'm going to stick these ones down first. If I put one together, you don't actually need to see the other one, do you? So they are exactly the same size. So they go together quite nicely. A little bit of wiggling. Manage to get glue on that, Jez. I'll wait till it dries and then it will rub off. And then we put this on the back. And then you can decorate. On the others, I just added a few bits of die cut, which I'll probably do on that, but I haven't die cut any. So when I'm die cutting my pockets, I'll, I'll do that. And if you've got any bits like I've got there, where I can see the white and just go over that with the black, just to cover that up. And if you've done what I've just done there, a little bit of icky mess, you can just take it off with your eraser rubber and nobody will ever know it was on there works better when it's dry okay so that's that so i need to cut my tags which i appear to have not done so uh, black card stock i will get ready okay so to make my tag so this is eight and a quarter wide this is standard card stock I'm going to cut it at two inches because my punch punches tags that are two inches wide. And then I'm just going to cut.
cut this in half at four and a quarter. Obviously, if you use different sized um, cardstock, then you can either leave it. That was four and eight, not four and a quarter. It'd be four and a quarter if you have the eight and a half wide cardstock. And you can leave it at that. And then this, I love this punch. I've got two different designs and you just push them up to the top and punch and you get a lovely shaped tag. And I like this shape for this particular journal because it's slightly gothic looking, I think. The other one I've got is also really nice and that's more of a scallop top which I've used before. You may have seen me use them before. And then all I did, these fit nicely on the top there for some journaling and then this one on the back. So we'll just quickly give those a little little glue and again you can add some stamping um, to this side which I'll probably do afterwards when I know what I want to write or I might just write straight on it these are for sort of journaling they might have a bit of just a, a stamped sentiment on it um, depends what I end up putting in this journal It is a journal made with my current favourite paper in my favourite colours. So it might be something full of my favourite things, my favourite memories. Um, don't know yet. I just think that just looks really pretty on the back. And I just think the kind of, you know, very sort of gothic shapes of a lost one. Did one fall away? I did prepare all of them in advance. It's probably been whisked away with my trimmer, so I'll just stick that one on. The other one will turn up. And I will be putting some sort of ribbon or something on these, but those are going to go in my finishing touches video that I am going to do. So those are those tags ready. So I'll just, I've already done one of those, haven't I? So that's that one. These will be ready now to glue together. So if I just do one of these to show you. So just like before they are cut do it that way up gonna have that at the top they're cut to the same size because they're cut out of the same die so they will tombow gives me a little bit of wigglage and I like tombow glue because some glues you can see the lines of where the glue is being put on but tombow you don't also, if you've got lower quality paper, um, you can see them through. So that's that. I didn't put anything on it because it does want to slip in and out of here. But I am going to cut a thumb hole in this, which I didn't do in the other. So I've just taken a little one inch circle punch. We don't sell these anymore, but so useful. One in there, just eyeballing it to be in the centre. There we go. So that's all ready to go down there. We've got one of these to go in there. So now we need to cut the pocket. So I've got these two and I cut them to four by three. 
which is the same size as this paper here. And I'm going to take my die, which I put to the side there, and I'm going to lay this on here. You've got a cutting edge on one side and the fancy edge on the other, and so the fancy edge goes to the inside. So I'm going to lay that from that corner, not quite to that corner, I want it to be up a little bit to cut that. Cutting them both, they both go in the same direction. I could do it the other way to be fair, but um, yeah, I might do that one one way, one the other. I didn't in the original. Um, don't know why, but I'll do that because I think it's slightly easier when it's around the page for it to be that way than that way. So I'll get those cut out find the piece that's missing, um, glue together the other bits and get some die cuts to decorate. So here we are, I've done all my die cutting. So you can see how that pocket looks there with that lovely effect. And I decided that um, it maybe needed a little something. So I cut one of these lovely borders off, which I thought would be good. I've cut some decoration to go on the back. Here, and I cut a little feather to go on the back of that. I felt it was a little bit like a quill and um, sort of as a journaling prompt. And I've already done these these ones. I remember to do my, my cutting opposite. Oops. Oh, then I did that one. I really like the way the sort of outline of the flower went with that paper. It's all part of the same sort of suite. So, um, it's sort of meant to match. So I'm just going to stick that across there. So I might just rip that a little bit off because we don't need it. So just a small bead of glue along the straight bit should be enough. I thought this little border went quite well with that one. So I'm going to Put that straight on there, line it up. If it doesn't move, I can line it up. There we go. That's cool. And then just snip it off. And then I'm just going to put glue down here, down here. And remember to put it up there. I forgot that bit last time when I was doing the other one. And I had to pull it off and put it in. Yeah, just a little bead. It's only a tuck spot. So I'm going to open it out. So stick that along the bottom. And up the side. There we go. That's that. And then I'm going to stick what I do is the back of the am trick. This is tacky glue. Put it on the back of the and I, I just prefer this on the back of my am to Tombow. And then, oh, I've done the wrong side. It's more beveled on the right side. So just pick that up. And then stick it down there. Just put block on there. Whilst I ink my flower up. Quite like this flower. It's got nice solid edges where you can put your glue. Stick that on there. Quite liked it because there was a flower on it. Thought that worked. This one really easy to 
stick on because it's quite solid. One of the main reasons for buying this die set was this feather. I love it. It's got really nice detailed embossing on it. Can you see? Love it. Love it, love it. Right, and that is all done there. Let's pop in there. And that one, pop in there. And then it's all ready to go in my book. Just putting the lid on my glue there. So this going in here. I might now move that envelope to somewhere else. And that will fit in there. And I just think that looks lovely on that page. And then on the other side, flippity doo da. There we go. We've got it on that page as well. Really like it. So I'll probably put that spider somewhere else. So it can go in there, can't it? And that is it finished all bar some little finishing touches. So next time we'll we'll make the cover. So we have our two signatures. I may or may not colour this outside. I haven't decided yet. So I'm gonna build the cover for this and then We'll have the sewing in the signatures and then we might do a few little uh, finishing touches. So we're nearly done. I'm so excited. So excited. OK, thank you for joining me. All the details, pictures uh, will be over on nargesa.co.uk. Links to my shop if you wish to buy any of the dyes or inks or anything that I have used. And this beautiful, beautiful, stunning paper. OK, bye for now.